It's time to see the theory we're going to need to understand why multiple reactions are special. So, the first thing I want to tell you is the different types of reactions that we're going to analyze. And there are essentially four basic types. I will, I don't know why the books uh, order is this series probably complex and independent because, of course, the one you know already is the independent one. Uh, I'm going to explain it in the next slide, so don't worry. Just know that there is a series a reaction, parallel reaction, complex reaction. Actually, complex is just these two guys at the same time. Independent is that none of these happens. And they may occur either alone, in pairs, or all together. So it's, let's see the parallel reactions. You have at least two reactions, of course. This is multiple reactions. If you were to have only one, well, this wouldn't work. And they're competing, or let's say, uh, playing with them. And you have maybe A turns actually here. You have A plus B, and you have this K constant rate will form to C. And you have at the same time that A may also react with two moles of D, and it will have a constant here, and will form E. And maybe you want C because it's, I don't know, maybe it's very high cost, and E will eventually take you money to separate. So you want, of course, to maximize C, minimize E. The thing here is that the reactant is being consumed by two different pathways, the first reaction and the second reaction. An example is here, ethylene, ethylene here, you have the oxygen here, and you could either produce this molecule, or two molecules, which has a lot of price or at least industrial value, and CO2 and H2O, which is probably, you know it by combustion, you know that burning stuff generally is not that nice. Only if you want energy, but this will not be cheap energy because this is very precious material. Actually, you can use it for many other things, so I wouldn't recommend this. And that's why you want to maximize this, at least you can sell this or make it into another very precious product. And yes, essentially it's that the parallel reaction. We have also the series reaction, which is also known as the consecutive reaction because you have A and B produce C and at the same time C is going to produce C. Or maybe, uh, no, yeah, it's okay. Or maybe B turns out to be E. So eventually you're going to have this like train and you will pass from the one you want to one that you don't want. Uh, actually, if we wouldn't like C, we will call it intermediate, and if normal intermediate always turn out to be D, well, you don't, you just need to ignore it. You don't need to model it because A plus B go to the intermediate, which you don't care because eventually it will turn out to D. That will be no problem. But the problem is when you want to produce C, and you know that C might turn out also to be D. So that's when you need to take care. Okay, so an example is this here, you have this molecule and you add uh, ammonia. What you're going to do is you're going to break this and ammonia will go here. But this is, as you can see, you have NH2 and one molecule of this. What happens if you still have that and you make it react? Well, you're going to have two molecules of this, but you will have, oh sorry, this is... NH2, K3, let me balance it. This should be a 2 and this should be 1 H. So you are dropping from NH2 to NH1. And this should be 2 molecules, sorry. And then what happens if you still do this? This is the D3, this mono, D and 3. You're going to have 3 molecules of this. And now you have only 1 or 0 nitrogen. So this is very simple. It's like uh, the composition, if you want to call it or so. You have it here, it will mix with this, and probably you want... I was reading that right now the market value of this one is higher of that one here and that one here. So you want this to be your product. You don't want the previous and you don't want the next one. So you want this exactly. We're going to analyze how can we do it so that we can produce more that of that substance. Then comes complex reaction, which is very interesting because you have, for example, series reaction and parallel reaction. So as you can see, you have it here, and not only that, A may turn out to be E. So 
this letter C, this letter C. Look at the complexity. Uh, the first being, uh, the first part you have A plus B will give you C plus D. But at the same time you still have A, maybe you have excess of A, and you have the C that already reacted. The C that already reacted might react another time with A. So the produced C will react with the A and will give you E. So it's kind of complex. You want to, if you, well, of course, depends what do you want to produce. You wanted to produce D, you want to avoid this one here. So you will probably decrease the concentration on A, so there is not a lot of A, and C won't react with A. An example is here, the production of, I think this one is methanol, goes here, this is ethylene plus water, and then you're going to use that same methanol, you have it here to produce, I think it's uh, aldehyde, I think probably, uh, yeah, no, this is uh, alcohol actually, it's methanol I think, plus hydrogen here, and you have here the same one, might react with this other product, so look how the same uh, reactant produces product A and product B, and those products at the same time can react to give further reaction. So that's very tricky for the complex reaction. Actually, I will say that those are the most complex, as the name implies. And the last but not least, actually, uh, is the easiest multiple reaction that they don't interfere with each other. They don't react. So, for example, A turns out to be B and C. And as you can see, B and C never appears here. D turns out to be E and F. So you have no interference. They have their respective products and yeah, essentially you have no problems. That will be an example in maybe in a petrochemical company when you are cracking substances. You have the 15 carbon molecule here and the 8 carbon molecule here which is obtained. Then you crack them and as you can see there's no problem. You have independent reactions. So yeah, we've seen the type of reactions. We're going to analyze what's a desired product, which is obviously the one we want, and the non-desired product in the next video. What's up guys? It's me, Chemical Engineering Guy. So if you liked the video, why not push the like button? It really helps me to know if you're liking the videos or if I should be changing something or if I should be adding something, taking out content, whatever. Also, sharing is caring. So if you got any kind of friends, teachers, colleagues or whatever kind of person that might be interested in this type of content, why not share it? Sharing helps our community to grow faster in members and in content. If you want to keep track of my activity, videos, uploads, experiments, playlists, whatever content I'm getting on YouTube, be sure to click the subscribe button. Subscribing to the channel is totally free, guys. My dream is to create an online academy of chemical engineering, where everyone can access it in the world. Imagine a place in which the student, the teacher, and the engineer get the best of each other. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys for the support and the love.